I'm at Chillercon in the faded glamour of the Royal Hotel in Scarborough and I'm joined by Dan Howarth, author of uh, the new Territory. Dan, how are you enjoying the conference so far? Oh, it's been really good. Uh, a couple of really interesting panels this mm. morning uh, and looking forward to some uh, exciting and rather ominous events this afternoon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Looking forward to that. Um, what can you tell us about Territory? What is the, the premise of this? Uh, it's territory was... Uh, probably the fourth or fifth iteration of this book so it's been written in various different forms different types of short stories flash fiction never quite captured the idea so it's based there uh, I read an article on the Guardian a couple of years ago about uh, hunting communities in remote part of Finland mm. uh, and the problem that they have there is that they're, they're very remote very isolated uh, they do a lot of hunting trapping things like that for their industries and their business and that is being threatened by the encroachment of uh, increased numbers of wolves, wild wolves in the area. Uh, and that kind of got me thinking about the kind of juxtaposition between that we have these days between kind of our kind of very technology-based society and perhaps a more kind of naturalistic, uh, back to basic society in which still relies on the land and is still affected by a lot of things that happen in terms of climate change and changes to environment that man has brought to those particular territories mm -hmm. of the world. And the actual premise, yeah. what, what, what are the protagonist or characters? What uh, so so the, the main protagonist is a hunter called Yari. Mm -hmm. um, he's uh, lost his wife. He's kind of slipping in and out of alcoholism. And his way of life is being threatened by the encroachment of the wolves. Uh, they've had a direct impact on his hunting abilities, the, his business. Mm -hmm. uh, he's very kind of fervently against them. Within the community, there are people who have an opposing point of view. Uh, and it's about how the community kind of works, comes together, or maybe not. Mm -hmm. to deal with the incoming threat or growth of the wolf population in the area. Okay. So it's about the people within the society as well as what's happening in terms of the animals as well. Mm. So it's a uh, Finnish society, yeah. you know, a country that's not your own. What kind of research process did you go through for this? Uh, an awful lot of YouTube videos. So uh, it turns out that wolves actually as a, kind of, as a species are very popular with a lot of celebrities so like George R. R. Martin for example. Uh, funds, it gives a lot of money to wolf preservation societies. Mm -hmm. So they're, when it comes to kind of the animals themselves, it's a huge kind of rich mm -hmm. uh, area of biological and uh, ecological resource out there. In terms of Finland, unfortunately I wasn't able to go. Mm -hmm. um, although this was kind of written a couple of years ago and then rewritten uh, during the pandemic, uh, I've still never made it to Finland, although I am desperately in love with a lot of the Nordic countries, and mm -hmm. although Finland falls slightly outside of that. Mm -hmm. um, but going on YouTube, uh, you know, reading articles, speaking to people who've been, I've got a couple of friends who've, mm -hmm. who've been out there, uh, just trying to get as much of a feel for the place mm -hmm. um, remotely and tangentially as you can. Mm -hmm. um, it's one of the challenges of being a writer, I think, is mm -hmm. it really is imagining or reimagining the places that you've, you've not yet made it to, perhaps. It's interesting, you weren't here for the, the World Horror Panel last night. No. Um, but they had the Finnish author on Marco, and uh, they were talking about sort of tourist horror, people who uh, make horror set in countries that they themselves are not from or yeah. don't go to. And he was almost lamenting the fact that as far as he could think, there are no examples of people writing Finnish, Finnish horror stories really? that he could think of. That's surprising. They are not from Finland, yeah. Yeah, because it's, I feel that snowbound horror is, you know, quite a, you know, a very thriving subgenre really. Mm. There's a lot of people dipping in and out of it and there's a lot of possibilities. And mm -hmm. To my mind, you know, there's no better place to set those kind of stories than, than somewhere within Scandinavia and you know, Finland, Iceland, Sweden, you know, mm -hmm. all those kind of places because they have a that kind of remote feel in some parts of them. Mm -hmm. You know, you think about Finland, it's, it's bordering Russia. You know, there's a lot of crossover, I think, in terms of culture as well as mm -hmm. um, not only, you know, uh, people going across the border as well. So there's a lot of that spread, there's a lot of influence. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it surprised me that that that's been raised actually, but yeah, I'm glad to be striking out into unknown territory almost. Yeah, you talked a little bit about the, the process, and this is your first uh, novella. Yeah. You've written well, short stories and flash fiction and things. How did this uh, project ending up being the first one that you took to novella line? Um, it's, well, as I said, this started life as a, as a short story, so uh, I was writing for a market that was, I think, 5,000 words, and I had a central idea around the conflict and particularly the ending was, was what always comes to me first when I'm writing a story. 
So I had that ending and then it was it was getting it into place, but I didn't feel that the short story format gave me enough room to play with the characters because although you have got the very physical and ecological threat of the imposing wolves, mm -hmm. what's really interesting is how that affects the people within the community who have lived together in difficult circumstances for many years and who need to rely on each other. Mm -hmm. When you start to break apart those relationships mm -hmm. by introducing the external threat, that needed more room to breathe. So it was written first as, as a novella and then completely rewritten word for word from first as a short story in there? Uh, so, yeah, so I had short story, two goes at that. Right. Wrote it as a novella, wasn't happy with it, rewrote it. Rewrote it, right. From the ground up uh -huh. uh, in its current form. So, yeah, wow. it's, it's had a few few lives this one and I'm uh -huh. really pleased that it's finally out there now. Excellent. And uh, you've got a, a novel coming up soon as, as well. Yeah, that's correct. Um, very left field turn from this so mm -hmm. it's with grey matter press here in american indie press yes the book's called lion hearts it's uh -huh. um set where i live on merseyside uh -huh. um and it's uh kind of a this is england american history x type of story and right. um, that man who's pulled into uh, far-right extremism and how okay. he struggles to uh, adapt to uh, the encroachment of that threat on his life, really, I guess, and the, the rise of uh, some very unpleasant people in the local area. That's some quite heavy subject matter. What yeah. compelled you to write about that? Uh, well, what, like I say, I live on the Wirral, and there's an mm. area there called New Ferry. Uh, a few years ago, it was blown up by a gas explosion, mm -hmm. um, and buildings, um, you know, businesses, people's livelihoods and lives, in some cases, totally destroyed by this blast. Um, it took out like a kind of three quarter mile part of the centre of the town. It was mm. an insurance scam in the end. Was it? Um, and the government uh, just left people. There was, there was no funding. The council did things late, so there was no funding, there was no help. All the help was generated by the community. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought it was an interesting way to explore how somebody might be driven by an event such as that into a more extreme viewpoint and how that kind of effect can have a you know a ripple out effect on, mm -hmm. on people on their views and how that might impact on somebody who had lived through that and been almost abandoned by the authorities and mm -hmm. how they may, might react as an individual or as a smaller group of people. Mm -hmm. Well that sounds uh, fascinating we'll look forward to that uh, in the meantime territory is available. Uh, 10th of June it's out um, if you're watching it and you're at Chillicon, advanced copies available now. Okay, Dan, thank you very much. Thanks, John.